this little guy gonna wrap himself up soon. The end of May is here, so mulberry and silkworm season is wrapping up too. Although industrial sericulture is emerging, raw silk production partially remains a cottage industry. This is a cottage in the sericultural town of Zhengzhe, where my buddy and his family breed silkworms. It's like your primary school project, but multiplied by 10,000 fold in scale. Each of these packs contain approximately 30,000 eggs. Sericultural season in this village this year kicked off on April 28th, when the packs of silkworm eggs were brought back and distributed among participating villagers. Clearly, they're all sericultural veterans, taking care to keep the eggs warm right away. Warmth is the name of the game during the initial stage. First off, the eggs were spread out evenly, then incubated by several layers of insulations. There is a heated mattress pad beneath in case it gets cold. Two days later, the eggs hatched. Silkworms are famous for their insatiable appetite. Upon hatching, the larvae were fed chopped mulberry leaves and kept warm as they eat and eat and eat. Silkworms are extremely sensitive to contamination, which is why lime powder is used as natural disinfectant. And when ants were discovered, no insecticide was deployed. Instead, hot water was utilized to kill the pests. As the little silkworms grew bigger, ants were no longer problematic, and the little guys grew fast. They just ballooned. During the molting stage, they turned from grey to this white. In this period, the main task of the breeder is to keep the worms fed. Hi, Zhenzhe. It's May 20th. I'm back and I'm super thrilled because the silkworms are back. What I mean by they're back, well, they were almost gone. Between this visit and the last, my homie informed me that the contractors responsible for nearby tracts of land went a little too liberal with pesticides. Just a little, but too much already, because silkworms are extremely sensitive and vulnerable to chemicals. For instance, breeders replenishing mulberry leaves in the evening can't wear bug spray. So they feed the silkworms while unwillingly feeding the mosquitoes too. The silkworms began dying about a week ago, and all the neighbors were impacted. But they sought help quickly and saved about 80% of the silkworms. Silkworms has been a part of this village for decades, and the villagers have never encountered this before. Now they're considering legal means in demanding reparations. But luckily, the survivors seem to be pretty healthy and hungry too. See how they're eating a lot and pooping a lot. Did you know that the little black speckles of discharge aren't just waste? In traditional Chinese medicine, the silkworm excrement is called silkworm sand and is known for blood moving, wind dispelling, and other properties. In modern industry, chlorophyll is extracted from the vacua, which is rich in the green pigment from the leaves. Because silkworms have fast digestion, and so large amounts of chlorophyll is pooped out instead of absorbed. Hear that constant rustle in the background? It came from the tens of thousands of silkworms wiggling and munching on the mulberry leaves. After another week, the worms started to spin silk. I didn't get to film that face this year, but here are some clips from last year. Notice the many white fuzzy cocoons under the mountages. I'm at a real workshop about 10 kilometers from Zhengzhe. Silkworm breeders have been in line since before dawn. My friend paid 251 RMB for the processing of 50 kg of cocoons in these four bags. These will produce comforter inners that will need to be dried before selling to other buyers. This is a culmination of one month's work and basically signals the conclusion of sericulture season this year.
The workshop also seems to produce its own silk comforter materials. They have huge stockpiles of cocoons and put them through the same boiling, softening process, and maybe extra washing, spin drying, etc. My friend remarked that when he used a silk comforter for the first time, he immediately felt how it conformed to his body better than the cotton quilt he was used to. It's the same problem as those filled with down. The blocky, puffy patches don't follow the contours of the body as closely. Of course, silk could be made into many things, from scarf and blouse to undergarment. You're sure to find better quality and more varieties here in China than anywhere else. After all, this is the cradle of silk culture, and thousands of years of experiences in making and using silk are unrifled anywhere. When feasible, come see the real beautiful China. Come to Suzhou, Huzhou, Hangzhou, or other areas of the silk-producing Jiangnan region. There are museums and shops that display and demonstrate various aspects of this ancient wonder. 再见。